good morning it's almost noon and so we're trying to do sound check to see if you can hear me now are we good yeah. we're pulling this up am I on let me know if you're out there in TV land computer land up. Oh, you can hear me that's a good thing good. okay is it noon yet it is noon and that's that means it is time for our Friday lunch and learn and I'm glad you joined me and I am Dr. Polly Heil Mealy at Abundant Health and Wellness. Now Abundant Health and Wellness is downtown Humble on Main Street and Avenue C, 323 East Main Street. I did not visit with you last Friday because I was in sunny California at a conference. It was a master class dealing with autoimmune disease and just different things. And so I just wanted to uh, start the conversation with some things that we learned there because I was quite shocked at the statistic that I'm fixing to share with you. And so I want to have kind of an organic conversation. I do have some notes and um, if you guys chime in, that'll be great. Uh, what we are wanting to talk about is how do we stay healthy and what does real health mean okay so one of the statistics and I have tons of books and it was uh, several days of just very very in-depth learning right so it's taken me all this week to kind of process and I'm sure I'm still processing you know how that goes so one of the uh, nuggets or I think it's like the second uh, speaker that came on said that only three percent so put that uh, in your in your in your thinking cap only three percent of adults in the United States are healthy and that really took me by surprise because three percent is a very very low number and so um, I just was kind of aghast at that. And so this is according to the Centers for Disease Control, according to their uh, measurements and rubrics. And so um, only 2.7% of all adults in the United States have these four characteristics. They have physical activity, regular physical activity. They eat a healthy diet. They are non-smokers and they have ideal body fat. And so um, if you have all of these four criteria, you're going to be in the 3%. So most people do not exercise. I don't know if most people smoke. I, I think that, or I thought that most people had quit smoking because of all of the information that we have, but apparently not. Um, most people that I see do not have ideal body fat. So one of the things, and this is not about fat shaming or anything like this, but this is a marker that everybody can see as to whether or not we have good health. So I'm gonna give you a formula and we're going to go ahead and put this down on the, um, after the video is over, we're gonna put this formula down. In fact, I did it myself this morning just to see if I had ideal body fat. I am not a smoker. I do eat healthy probably 95% of the time. And I have varying degrees of physical activity. I could, if I'm honest, I could say that I would do better if I had more uh, physical activity. Hey, Karen, thanks for joining. Um, but you know time is what it is and uh you know I, I get i get some physical activity not as much as probably i need to and that might be a new year's resolution that uh, i can move forward but one of the things that everybody can check right now is whether or not you have ideal body fat so and i'm going to tell you why this is important so let me give you the um give you the equation right and none of us like math right? None of us like that. So um, I had to write it down. You take the pounds that you weigh, right? Don't do it in stones. All of my English friends, don't do it in stones. I want you to do it in pounds. 
and then take your height in inches. So uh, you've got to, like me, you know, I'm five foot something. Well, I know that five times 12 is 60. Add those extra inches. I think I, I, think I said I was five foot 10, so that would be 70 inches, right? That's good math. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, get your calculator out. So what you do is you take, you divide your weight in pounds by your height in inches squared. So for me, if I'm 70 inches and I square that, that's 70 times 70, which is 4,900, right? So is that right? I think that's right. And so I divide my weight by that and then multiply it by 703. So I've got my little equation written out here and um, so we'll put it up on the website so you can see how it works. You don't have to remember, uh, you don't have to remember the formula. And most of us, uh, I'm just not a brainiac in the math department. I'm just gonna put it right out there. So anyway, so when I did that, I came up with my ideal uh, body fat and I am within the limit. So let me give you this uh, limits here, okay? So a person that is 20 to 40, and we're gonna, we're gonna write this down on the website, 20 to 40 years old, you should have a body fat, uh, body fat index of 21 to 33%. That's healthy. If you are 41 to 60, they're a little bit more generous, 23 to 35%. If you're 61 to 79, they're even more generous, 24 to 36%. Now, older people need more body fat. Don't ask me why, but they just need more body fat. That's for women. So for men in the same age groups, the 20 to 40 year olds should have only eight to 19% body fat. So they're very generous with us women, okay? Men that are in the 41 to 60 age group, they need to have 11 to 22%. And then men that are older than 60, 61 to 79, need to have 13 to 25%. So in my category, right, my age group, I should have 23 to 35%. And my actual uh, percentage was 24, uh, sorry, 23.52. So I'm just over the 23%. So that's my body fat index and I am in the limits that I need to be in. Now, why is this important? Well, it's important for a lot of reasons. There are three ways that the body deals with poisons. One is it shunts the poison into the fat cells. And so we're walking around heavier than we need to be because that is a healing strategy of the body. So if you're carrying around a toxic load, an environmental load, hey, Lash, thanks for joining. Uh, and Kim, Kim, thanks for joining. So y'all aren't coming up. There's a big delay on my screen, so I'm not seeing you. So I've got people that are helping me see where you are. So I appreciate that. And I'm gonna flip my flip chart so that I can just see. Um, one of the things uh, that the CDC says is that there is a decline in life expectancy. And this is the quote. A tipping point has been reached beyond which technological advances will no longer compensate. And what they're saying is in times past, because we've been able to have all this technology, we've been able to lengthen the lifespan, but now we've reached a tipping point and that's not good. So obesity and the diseases linked to it will not be reversed with the notion that all calories are alike. Okay, so they're talking about dieting, which is like a dirty word and all that kind of stuff. So um, I wanna go to the next little thing that I wanted to talk to you about because I, I started uh, telling you about this just a minute ago. So dealing with the toxins, the body has three options. One is to bury them in body fat. The second is to deposit it into your tissues. And then the third is to remove it. So what we want is we want to be healthy. When we are um, depositing the toxins in the tissues, this is when disease sets up. Now I know I said diet and I lost all of my viewers. So 
Um, I hate that because this is really, really important information. So if our body fat index is too high, that is indicative that the body is pushing these, this toxic load into the tissues, and that is an indication that we're not cleaning the body properly. So this is really, really important. So a lot of people, it's politically, uh, or not politically correct to say anything about people who are overweight, and I'm certainly not trying to call you out or fat shame or anything like that. It is indicative of a healthy body if you can be within those body fat index guidelines. So this is something that you can do in the privacy of your own home with a scale and uh, your driver's license, because your driver's license says how high you are, how tall you are. You can do this and you can see where you fit in this matrix and it is a wake up call for us when we are obese, when we are heavy, we are two times more likely to be diagnosed with diabetes. If we become diagnosed with diabetes, then we are four times more likely to be diagnosed with cancer. Nobody has time for that, okay? Nobody wants to do that. So we wanna talk a little bit about this. So what causes the body not to be able to flush the toxins? Well, it is the biological terrain or the microbiome in the gut, right? So if you've been watching us on Facebook, if you've been listening to the radio program, if you've been uh, coming in and, and hearing some of the, the talks that we've done here in the clinic, we have been talking in the last probably six months really focusing on making sure that gut microbiome is repaired and intact. Now, there is a, I don't think it's a disease, it's more of a dysfunction, but it's called SIBO, okay? You may have been diagnosed with SIBO from your doctor. SIBO stands for small intestine bacterial overgrowth, right? So what that means is the good bacteria in the gut has been overgrown with bad bacteria. So I know I've said this before, but just to remind you, when we are born, uh, especially if we are born vaginally, we have a natural vaginal birth. And if we have been breastfed, then we will have a ratio of 80% good to 20% bad bacteria in the microbiome, okay? So I know there's a fashion now, there's the trend to let's schedule this baby and let's do a C-section, the scars are much smaller and all that kind of stuff and it's more convenient and yes and yes and yes, but your baby suffers because number one, they don't get the first inoculation of the good bacteria and number two, as it was explained to me by my cousin who's a nurse, as the baby is pushed through the birth canal, it expresses all the mucus in the lungs and so babies that are born uh, naturally have better lung function than babies that are born C-section. So that's just a little thing out there that, that you guys need to know, okay? So um, SIBO, we're back to SIBO. If you have SIBO, you do not have the right biological terrain to process all of your nutrients. So what kind of symptoms can you expect? Well, these are some of the symptoms. Diarrhea, mineral deficiencies, vitamin deficiencies, malabsorption of your nutrients. So you eat a meal, but like 20 minutes, 30 minutes later, you're still hungry or you're hungry again. It didn't stick with you because you did not absorb all of the nutrition in your food. Neuropathies. Neuropathies due to fat soluble vitamin discrepancies or sorry, deficiencies. So neuropathy is nerve pain. And we have a lot of people that call the clinic and say that they have nerve pain. They have nerve pain in their feet. They have nerve pain in their hands. Uh, they can have nerve pain all over. So what that is all about is maybe your 
fat soluble vitamins are not being absorbed and so that's something that's very very important and i just want to remind you we are in a live clinic you hear the phones you hear the people and it's all good just uh you know we are open for business it is friday it is lunchtime, so just kind of uh overlook all that so folate levels folate levels may show to be normal but are frequently elevated due to increased synthesis of folate by small bowel bacteria. So what this means is that the bacteria that is in your gut, the bad bacteria, it's, a, it's live, okay, it's a parasite, it's live. It eats and it poops, okay? Bacteria poops folate. So you can go to the doctor and you can have a good uh, metabolic panel uh, and it shows that your vitamins are okay and that your folate may be a little elevated. Well, if your folate is elevated, it could be because you have high levels of bacteria poop in the small intestine. So I know that's something that nobody ever talks about, but we want to talk about that because it's important, okay? Now, the gallbladder, right? Most people, many people have their gallbladder removed and the doctor will say, it's not a big deal. We're just going to remove it. You've got gallstones, you've got atrophy, you've got thick bile and that kind of thing. Yes, you have thick bile because bile is like a soap. It's like a detergent. And what it does is it emulsifies the fat that we eat so that it can be used by the body as a nutrient. If you don't have a gallbladder, then you do not have enough bile to act as a soap or a detergent to break up that fat. Now, the fats that we eat in our food, I'm talking about the good fats, the fats that are in nuts, the fats that are in avocados, the fats that are in eggs, all of those are very, very good fats. Your uh, bio-omegas, your omega-3, omega-6, uh, 9, 7, uh, all, all of those, you need those in your body. And if you don't have a gallbladder, then you're, um, you're not having enough bile to emulsify those fats so that your body can use them. So if you can't emulsify them, okay, break them down, then you're going to have a problem. So we always want people when they come in and they're talking about gallbladder insufficiencies. We've got some great products that will actually go in and cause your body to be able to break up stones, get that sludge moving. Uh, one of my colleagues call, uh, calls one of our products gallbladder in a bottle and he recommends that everybody with no gallbladder take this because it helps your body function as if you have a gallbladder. So the bile acids prevent um, the antimicrobial agents, right? The bile salts prevent the bacteria overgrowth in the small bowel. So everybody who has no gallbladder may have SIBO. So that's really, really important. So what do you do? Well, you supplement at every meal, either with ox bile, okay, those are bile salts from an ox, or you take an enzyme that has bile salts in it. And we have several of those things. This is very, very important if you are a client of mine, if you come into the clinic and you're telling them that, they, that you want enzymes, it's really, really important for us to know if you have a gallbladder or not, because if you do not have a gallbladder, then you're gonna have some problems. So we need to make sure that we give you the gallbladder with the ox bile in it or the bile salt in it so that you can function the way you need to. So this is very, very important. The microbiome, right, is the terrain of the stomach, the small intestine, and the large intestine, right? So we need to make sure all of that is functioning. Now, do you know or are you familiar with the term epigenetics, okay? Genetics, everybody knows that's what your genes are, but epigenetics, that means before genetics or pre genetics and it is a study of science that says what you eat your lifestyle and all of the things that make you you 
can express the genes that you want to express and it can turn off the genes that you want to turn off. So what does that mean in real language? That means just because your mom had cancer and your dad has cancer, you don't have to have cancer. If you have the right nutrition, if you have the right uh, food source, if everything in your body is working the way it needs to, you have the right pH and all of that, then you can switch off the cancer gene. So this is very, very important. I think I have another quote here, but I may not. Um, I want to just see, I want to see, I want to see. I had it somewhere. Um, the quote, let me see the quote, um, if I can remember it. There are like 30,000 different ways your genes can be expressed, right? So if you have a high environmental toxin load, if your body fat index is really, really high, that means you're carrying around too many toxins, that will cause your body to have a poor gene expression, okay? So if, so practical terms, if you have a body mass index within the right parameters, and we're gonna put this up on the, uh, it's already on there, okay. Is it on where the video is? Mm -hmm. I thought you couldn't do that while I was videoing. I can type, I just can't post things. Oh, so when it gets posted, all the comments will be posted? Yeah, I mean, no, I just can't post files. Oh, okay. Okay, so all of that is up there. Okay, awesome. So if your body mass index is within these parameters, then you're probably going to have correct and proper gene expression. If your body mass index is over these parameters, then you're probably going to have poor gene expression. And so you're going to, as I said earlier, you're going to head more toward obesity. And when you get into that obesity, you're going to have more complications with diabetes and with cancer. And so nobody wants that. So remember, your environment can change the way your genes express themselves. So how do we keep our environment clean? Well, we do that through a number of things. We make sure that we eat uh, non-processed foods, okay, because processed foods have a taint of pesticides and heavy metals and all that kind of stuff, which makes us very, very sick. We want to make sure that we change out our cleaning products. We need to have holistic cleaning products. We need to get most of the benzene out of our home. Benzene is a detergent that is used in our cleaning products. And what it does is it enables parasites to have, hey Denise, thanks for joining. It enables parasites to have free reign in our bodies. Parasites do what? They poop, remember? So if bacteria poops folate, what is the parasite pooping? I don't know, I don't wanna know. I don't wanna have any parasites. And so for that reason, I take a parasite cleanse every day. Why do I do that? Because I don't always eat organic when I'm out and about and traveling, like I went to the conference last week. I don't have any choice of my foods, and so I have to eat airplane food and all that kind of stuff. And so I may be getting a lot of pesticides and different things. Uh, I have animals. I have, um, I have a cat. I have a little dog, and so they're full of parasites. We worm our animals once a year. We worm our children once a year. We should worm ourselves once a year. We walk around barefoot around here. It's in the south. It's November, and it's, what is it, 80 degrees outside? I mean, it's hot. It's really hot. And so you can pick up all this nastiness, right, through the skin. And so... We want to make really, really sure that we're giving every opportunity for our body to expel the parasites, right? So we want to expel the bacteria. We want to expel the parasites. We don't need any other organisms inside our organism. So we want to make sure that we do that. So I hope you've learned something today. I hope that you are encouraged. Don't anybody start the holiday season in a panic because your body mass index is 
in the wrong place. It is the holidays. I want you to enjoy next week is Thanksgiving. By the way, we will be closed on that Friday, so there won't be a uh, Facebook Live from me. Uh, the next week is December the 1st, and it's kind of debatable if I will be able to do that because I'll be out of town again. So uh, anyway, just want to encourage you, enjoy your holidays with your family. Enjoy Thanksgiving next week. Enjoy Christmas. But after Christmas, right, after New Year, I want you to get serious about reducing your body mass index. I want you to get into that ideal weight parameters and why. Because if your body mass index is low, then you're going to be among the 3% of healthy people. Now, years ago, it's probably seven years ago now, that I started doing a weight loss clinic. And I didn't want to do weight loss clinic because I didn't want to do a vanity program. I wanted to be serious. I wanted to be taken seriously and that kind of thing. But as I did studies, I found out that if you could get people skinny, you can get people healthy. And it's all about the body mass index. So again, not trying to fat shame anybody, just wanting you to take a good hard look at yourself. We're coming up to New Year. We're coming up to New Year resolution. And I want you, my friends, my family, and all of the people that follow us on our uh, Facebook Live, I want you to be healthy. I want you to be in that 3%. And maybe if all of us do this, then we'll inspire all of our friends around us to do this. And maybe we can move the index so that not only 3% of United States uh, adults are healthy, but maybe 5%, maybe 10%, maybe 20%, and then maybe on and on and on until we get 100% of the population to be healthy. Wouldn't that be great? It would be great for our national morale, I am sure. I am sure people are just snarky because they don't feel well, and I do not want you guys to be part of that. So, I am going to sign off and say Happy Thanksgiving next week. We are open Monday, Tuesday, and half a day on Wednesday. So if you need to get in uh, before the holiday, just uh, give us a call. And otherwise, I will talk to you soon. Have a great, great Thanksgiving. Be grateful.